Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to another episode of Cool Linux Tools. Today we're going to take a look at a photo manager called Gthumb. And while we have lots of great options in Linux for photo management and editing, Gthumb combines just the right mix of modern interface with simplistic editing tools that are easy to understand. So let's jump in and take a look. I think Gthumb really fits the bill, and I think many of you watching will appreciate it for what it is. It's a simple, clean interface. There's not a steep learning curve. You get more than just your typical viewing options. You do have editing features and capabilities built in, all in a really a low resource package, and again, without too much of a learning curve. So let's jump in and take a look. So this is what you see when you first launch into Gthumb and you'll also see that it will load into the last folder that you used to work with your photos so that saves you a little time searching around you've got your typical folder hierarchy here where you can select various images and folders now you've got some information down here as well you can look at the properties of that particular um, image you'll see the properties but you can also look at more detailed information, um, camera information such as resolution and the white balance and things like that. Uh, basically, this is for someone who really is into editing photos and photography and you want to know more information about the particular settings within the camera, for example. So this will give you more information there as well. Uh, then you have uh, histogram make sure I, yeah histogram which I'm not going to pretend that I understand all the benefits of being able to see this but maybe some of you who are, who again are really into photography will appreciate having histogram for the particular images so if we scroll through you'll see that that will change from image to image now I didn't take these photos I pulled these off of the web for the video purposes so all right let's go ahead and step through some of the controls up top you can navigate your uh, particular folders here left and right click I really like the history tab so this is going to show me a list of any folders that had photos that I worked with so you could quickly go to those photos you also have bookmark capability so you could bookmark a particular photo and let's say for example you had a folder that said family vacation you could bookmark that for quick access you can edit that bookmark so if you don't like what you named it or you mistyped now here's a function that really you would kind of take it for granted until you see how powerful the search function is. So we're going to jump over here to search. It's going to start off with the particular folder that we are in. Now more than just search by name, this allows you to set up rules. And I really like this. If you have a lot of photos that you're trying to manage, this kind of search is really powerful. So you can set it up to match all of the following rules or any of the following rules. Now some of your rules include uh, the audio. So if it's a, uh, an audio uh, file that's mixed in with your photos, you're going to pull that out and maybe you can move that to another folder, for example. But the other areas for quick searching of your photos gets into description the uh, file name for example the date modified or the date you took the photo could be important also the place now there's an area here that allows you to fill in all of this information so if you don't have that maybe it's an older photo that didn't record any metadata you can actually go in through this program and add that information so that in the future you'll be able to do a quick and easy search uh, so very nice feature there all right, so let's look at right click. And if we right click, you get lots of options. You could go full screen, you could set it as a background, and then you've got your other common features cut, copy, paste, move, so on and so forth, duplicate. But then down here, we get into comment. So here, you could go in and add your description, add your title, uh, your location, or your place where you took the photo, and then you can select various tags. So right now we have the holidays tag set up, and you can set up additional tags as well. Then you've got other information here, copyright, uh, country, state. So if you're on vacation, for example, you could put in the city and the country. Maybe you were traveling through Europe, and so you could sort your photos that way. 
or search your photos that way. So we're going to cancel out of there. And then finally down here you have tags. So here you could go in and choose pre-configured tags that you've set up uh, previously or create new tags. All right, so let's move over here. Let's say you just quickly wanted to launch in and see a presentation or slideshow of the photos in that folder. And there is a timed transition here to where the photos will automatically advance, or you could control that on your own with the keyboard. Next, we have a set of tools here that allow us to rotate left and right, convert the format, resize images, change the date of the image, also delete any existing metadata, rotate physically, and then you've got personalized. Now, I'm going to move through this pretty quickly because there's a lot more to see here within Gthumb than you might imagine at first glance. So under personalize, you've got commands that you can set up. So again, if you've got a very large image library and you're trying to get through and sort and set it up so that it's in the proper folder and things like that, well, that can be a tedious task. Here you can add scripts or commands or shortcuts that allow you to speed up the process for what you're doing. So, for example, you could set up a shortcut key for move to a particular folder or copy to a particular folder. All right, and then let's move over here where you've got some export options. And this is time saving here. You export directly to Pisca. Photo Bucket, Flickr, Facebook, so on and so forth, or create a contact sheet, an image wall, uh, copy all of these to an optical disc or web album. And then lastly here, we have some additional features. So you could launch into a new window, open a different location, save as, sort by, choose to show hidden files, and then you have import features. So here you could import from removable device, so a USB flash drive, for example, or another folder. You could also import from Pisca Web Album, Flickr, or Facebook. And then we have a tool here, I think, that's very handy, which is Find Duplicates. There have been times in the past where I myself have created a duplicate without knowing it, and so you've got, you know, maybe or potentially a large image there taking up space when it doesn't need to. So, you know, to be able to find duplicates is very helpful. Or perhaps you were editing an image and you didn't name it something different and you've got a file there that's close enough to be a duplicate, then again, you could delete that. You could also import embedded metadata. All right, so this is all for viewing and kind of uh, seeing where your folders are located and searching for your uh, files um, or your photos, excuse me. Next, we're going to launch over into the edit mode. And this is the mode that I think they've done an exceptional job at. Basically, you've got lots of features here to quickly go in, and some of your more basic features, but to quickly go in and change the look of this image without spending a lot of time learning, you know, hey, what does this do? Or if I combine these two tools, how does that work? You know, the learning curve stuff that we sometimes deal with in the more advanced programs. So here you've got a couple of options. First of all, you could navigate back to the view mode. Uh, you could choose to show the actual size of the image. And so you'll see that depending on the size of the actual photo, sometimes that'll zoom way in. So, for example, on the sailboat here, if we go to full image, you'll see there you're only seeing part of that image because it's a fairly large image. Um, then you could choose fit to window, which we have now, and then fit to width or fit to height. You could also rotate the image. And then over here to the right, you can choose to show that information again for that particular photo. And as we talked about earlier, you can see some of the camera information if it's available. Next, we have edit. We're going to skip that for now. Then you have comment. So again, here for that particular image, you could still go in and add comments, information about that photo that you could search for later. Then we have tags. We looked at that earlier, so you could set up tags. And then you have your window selection or options again. All right, now we're going to go to edit mode. 
So here you've got a couple of lines here of options. You've got colors, rotation, and format. Now, don't get me wrong here. You're not going to go in and find tool sets like you would see in GIMP, for example, or Krita, for example. Those are more advanced uh, photo editing tools. Uh, but if you wanted to quickly go in and make some changes, you'll see here that you can navigate this, make some basic changes, and then maybe later on that image you would go in and say use GIMP for something like cropping out the background or something like that. All right, so up top here, you're going to see save. Had we made changes, we could quickly save or save as where you'd give it a different file name. And then here you've got undo and redo. Those are probably more of your uh, two of your more important controls there, because if you mess up, which I often do in a photo, you've got undo to quickly access there and, you know, take away those changes that you made. Then we have colors. Now I like this because you've got an automatic contrast adjustment with three presets. Now I have found that stretch is really the best in the preset. Uh, so you have stretch, equalize, and you'll see that that's changed the color quite a bit. Not a bad look, but not what I'm going for. And then you have uniform. So that really changes it. I've just found that for my purposes, stretch seems to be a good preset mode as far as contrast. All right, so we'll click Accept. Then you've got some deeper controls here where you could get into really changing the gamma, the brightness, the contrast, uh, the mix of colors. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time here just for recording purposes, but this lets you really get in and fine-tune things. And I'll just tell you that moving that slider, you want to make small incremental moves because otherwise, as an example, you can really drastically change the look of that photo. All right, so I'm going to accept that change. Uh, then you have another option here and that's enhance focus as well as grayscale. I want to just jump into grayscale because it's got three presets for that grayscale or black and white look. Now I like this a lot of times especially when I'm shooting photos of you know outdoor photos and things like that. I think that black and white look is really nice in some cases. So here you've got three options brightness, saturation, and average. I really like saturation in this case, so we're going to accept that. And then our next control here for color is color curves. So we're going to come back out of that. And then you have what I call filters or special effects. And basically these are going to add all kinds of different effects to the image. Uh, so blurred edges, for example. So you'll see there the propeller is blurred out and the tail is blurred out some. Or negative. Blue, mango, cooler, things like that. So we're going to accept that with the blur. And then lastly here we have red eye removal. Now if this was an image of a person, sometimes you'll see red eye due to the flash. And this would allow you to go in and quickly remove red eye. Next up we have rotation, so we can rotate by 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. We can mirror the image, maybe I need that airplane flying in the other direction for a web page or a publication. You can also flip the image vertically, now we have an upside down airplane. And last but not least you can rotate and you can do that manually. So if we wanted to rotate that image we just simply click and drag. And actually, let me get that straight. There we go. And you can also use the slider for the angle, crop the borders, keep the aspect ratio, and things like that. So this gives you enough tools if you need to straighten an image. Um, you know, sometimes if you're taking a quick series of images, you're not holding the camera as straight as you possibly could in some cases. So to be able to rotate that image and straighten it out is very helpful. Next in line, we've got format. And you've got two simple tools here. You've got resize. So if it's an extremely large image, uh, maybe you've taken it with uh, you know, a very high resolution camera, uh, but you intend to email that image, let's say, to a multitude of people, you don't want a, you know, a 20, uh, 20, or excuse me, a 2 gig image. Maybe you want to scale that down size-wise. So you've got some options there. You can do that through dimension, and uh, you can also go through with preset aspect ratios. 
Maybe you're going to print it and you want a particular size there for postcard, for example. And then you have crop. And under crop, you're also going to have some uh, options here. You could crop that to square or other particular sizes. Or you could go in and choose uh, manually to crop that image. Or you can go over here to the width, height, and position and make adjustments there or fine-tune adjustments there. So what we're going to do for the purposes of the video here, we're just going to crop out just the airplane. So I'm going to do that manually. And we'll go ahead and accept that. So there we have it. Now, once that's accepted, we're going to go up and we could choose save, which would save it under the same file name or save as, and that would allow us to choose a different file name. So all in all, again, just to recap, GThumb is an excellent balance between simple and easy to use with enough edit features there to get you through common task. Um, you know, this is probably not something you're going to use for, well, I know for a fact, you're not going to use this to remove the background, let me put it that way. But for some of your more basic editing tasks, um, this will, I think, serve you well. And then it will also allow you to properly sort and for the future set up uh, information metadata that would allow you to uh, search for that particular uh, photo much easier than if you had no data associated with the image. So, well, that's it for now. I hope this is helpful. I hope you give GThumb a try. And um, I know there's lots of other very good photo editing software or photo management software out there. So, you know, in the video notes uh, or comments section, please put your favorite. And if you've got any tips here with GThumb, feel free to share those. Uh, that helps the community. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. We'll check you later.